This is Malcolm Lowry's grave that I'm stood in front of here. Malcolm Lowry died in a village in Sussex called Ripe. His death was technically by misadventure, um, which is obviously a very vague term. In a moment we're going to go and see the house where this misadventure took place. Lowry died from an overdose of prescription medication, oh, Kelly, prescription medication, ah, prescription medication and alcohol. Um, apparently he used to take the pills sort of like sweets as if they were sort of pastels. Um, and so it's quite possible that he, his overdose was accidental. One of his biographers, George Bowker, believes that his wife killed him as sort of revenge due to his alcoholism and, and lack of productivity and increasing violence and unhappiness. Um, others think it was a, a deliberate suicide. Um, this is the first place we're looking at today on my day trip of writerly suicides. This is the house Malcolm Larry died in. Just filming it from a distance in case there are people in here because you know it's middle England in the afternoon, aren't friendly. Yeah, there's a blue plaque, which I hadn't been expecting. And he died here. Yeah, you just thought that I'd mention that. So we are now a little bit south of a town called Lewis at the house of Virginia and Leonard Wolfe. This is the house Virginia Wolfe lived in during her final bout of depression that led to her suicide. In about ten minutes I'm going to walk down to the river where she threw herself in. If you haven't read Virginia Woolf's suicide note, I recommend you do. It's a heartbreakingly beautiful piece that was composed and left in here. Another very sad life. If you don't believe me. So we're now, where is he? There's a little one. There he is. So we're now walking from Virginia Woolf's house to the river in which she killed herself. Probably not the same route that she took, because I don't know this area in the way that she would have done, because she lived here, so she'd have probably known the best way to, the most efficient way to do that when she decided that that was what she was going to do. Um, obviously, we're replicating that journey, even though it's not in, the, in, a, in a literal replication, which is in itself quite weighty, quite serious. Um, I was quite worried about that I'd drown myself recently. That was sort of what when my breakdown was at its worst recently. I was obsessed with the fact that I was going to drain, drown myself and there was nothing I could do to stop it. I don't feel like that anymore. I'm still depressed, I'm still very unhappy, but I'm not suicidal anymore. However, I am still interested in, in that impulse in other people and that's why we're looking at, at these things today, on my birthday. And this is the river that Virginia Woolf drowned herself in. I don't know how to pronounce its name, there's a little cubby, he's not thinking of jumping in. The Ouse the Ooze, I'm not quite certain what it's called. But at the side of the river was found her hat and her cane. Um, obviously, I mean like a stick, not a stash. Um, and people worried that she'd fallen in, though obviously she hadn't because she'd left us at a very um, unsubtle suicide note. That's Virginia Woolf's death by drowning. Next, we're carrying on, slightly further south, to see the site of another literary drought. It's night time, it's taken me far too long to get here. The sound might be very bad in this. Brighton Beach, where Anne Quinn walked into the waves in August Bank Holiday Weekend 1973. This is the weekend after August Bank Holiday Weekend. Like Virginia Woolf, she drowned herself in the sea, not in the river, in her hometown where she grew up, where she spent much of her life. I don't know if Anne Quinn left a suicide note, but I know that B.S. Johnson left too. This is the house where he died, on Dagmar Terrace in Islington. His two suicide notes, one was addressed to a friend and read, finish this, stuck to a bottle of whiskey that he was drinking. The night he slashed his wrist in his bar in one of the rooms up here. The other night he left was a two-line poem reading, This is my final word. This is a strange place for me to come back to, as it's where I left when my, my breakdown began. And it was leaving the place I thought it was home that sort of kicked this whole thing off, really, and has left me now without any home. Um, but hopefully over the next few months, I'll spend more time researching these writers that I've been looking at today and look for a positive to find in all this literary and happiness. Let's see what happens. Happy birthday to me.